shall come to order. We are holding a meeting of the Urban FA chapter. Madam Vice President, all officers at their station. I shall call the roll of officers to turn right at their station to report back to you, Mr. President. The Sentinel. Stationed by the door. Your duties there? Through this door pass many friends of the FFA. It's my duty to the doors open at all times and our friends are welcome. I appear for the meeting room and paraphernalia. I strive to keep I strive to keep them comfortable and assist the president in the order. The reporter. Stationed by the flag. Why by the flag? As the flag covers the United States of America, so I strive to inform the people so that every man, woman, and child may know that FFA is a national organization that reaches from the state of Alaska to the Virgin Islands and from the state of Maine to Hawaii. The treasurer. Stationed by the emblem of Washington. Your duties there? I keep a record of receipts and disbursements just as Washington kept his farm accounts carefully and accurately. I encourage theft among the members and strive to build up my financial standing through savings and investment. George Washington was better able to serve his country because he was financially independent. This secretary, stationed by the ear of court. Your duties there? I keep an accurate record of all meetings and correspond with other secretaries wherever corn is grown and FFA members meet. The student advisor, here by the owl. Why stationed by the owl? The owl is a time-honored emblem of knowledge and wisdom. As I've been elected by the rest of you, I've been asked to advise you from time to time as the need arises. I hope that my advice will always be based on true knowledge and ripened by wisdom. Madam Vice President, why do you keep a plow at your station? The plow is a symbol of labor, intelligence, and soil. Without labor, labor, neither knowledge nor wisdom can accomplish much. My duties require me in directing the work of our organization in the absence of our president, his place is beneath the rising sun. Why is the president so stationed? The rising sun is a new taking of air and agriculture. If we follow the leadership of our president, we shall be led out of the darkness of selfishness into the glorious sunlight of brotherhood and cooperation. Mr. President, all officers are at their stations. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The secretary will now call the roll of members. There are approximately 52 members and guests present, Mr. President. Thank you. FA members, why are we here? To practice brotherhood, honor agricultural opportunities and responsibilities, and develop those qualities of leadership which FA members possess. May we accomplish our purpose. I now declare the meeting of your Van FA chapter duly open for the transaction of business or attention to any matters which should now properly be presented. Peyton Keener will now read the minutes from the previous meeting. The September 12, 2019 meeting was called to order by Justin Priest, Chapter President. The meeting began at 6.45 p.m. at Melvin Miller Park. There were 92 members and guests present. The officers conducted the opening ceremonies. Peyton Tiener, Chapter Secretary, read the minutes from the previous meeting in March. Janie Wallace moved and Connor Thomas seconded the motion to accept the report. The motion passed with a voice vote. Janie Wallace read the Treasurer's report from the months of June and July. The ending balance was $14,148.66. Peyton Tiener moved and Connor Thomas seconded the motion to accept the report. The motion passed with a voice vote. There was no unfinished business. Phoebe Heatherly read the support group committee report, and Connor Thomas moved to accept the report. Peyton Tiener seconded, and the motion passed with a voice vote. Jessica Salyers moved, and McKinley Priest seconded to approve the chapter's program of activities. The motion passed with a voice vote. Peyton Tiener moved, and Trey Williams seconded that the chapter pay $5 per student to attend the Green Hand Conference. The motion passed with a voice vote. Rachel Delaney moved, and Connor Trawick seconded that the chapter pays $65 and the alumni pay $75 for the students to attend National Convention. The motion passed with a voice vote. Peyton Stambaugh moved and Connor Thomas seconded that the chapter pay $20 each for four members to attend Ohio Legislative Leadership Conference. The motion passed with a voice vote. Officers performed closing ceremonies and the meeting was adjourned by Justin Priest, Chapter President, at 7.08 p.m. Danny Wallace will now read the treasurer's report. Period covered October 1st, 2019 to October 31st, 2019. The 
the Urbana FFA chapter had a beginning balance on October 1st of $14,251.66. There were two pay-ins received this month. The first pay the first pay-in was for National FFA Convention and Donations on October 4, 2019. The amount was $660. The second pay-in was on October 25, 2019 for National Convention, porch chairs, FFA jackets, and a donation in the amount of $780. The total deposit for October was $1,440. There were five disbursements for the month. The first disbursement was to Walmart in the amount of $143. The second to Champaign County Library in the amount of $6. The third disbursement to Farm Science Review in the amount of $294. And the fourth to Ohio FFA Association in the amount of $80. And the fifth disbursed to Versailles High School in the amount of $150. The Urbana chapter's ending balance for the month was $15,018.63, respectfully submitted daily Is there a motion to approve the reports which have been read? I move to approve the reports which have been read. It's been properly moved by Jess and seconded by Connor to approve the motions that have been read. All in favor of approving the motions, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Any unfinished business which should now be transacted. Hearing none, we should now proceed with committee reports. Is there any committee reports? Hearing none, we will now continue with our special features. Will Addison Cutlip, Elizabeth James, Faith Dinkenwalder, Paige Campbell, Michaela Cox, please come up on stage and join me. reciting the FFA Creed written by E.M. Tiffany adapted at the Third National Convention. I believe in the future of agriculture with a faith born not of words but of deeds. Achievements won by present and past generations of agriculturalists and the promise of better days through better ways. Even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. I believe that to live and work on a good farm it, or to be engaged in other agricultural pursuits is pleasant as well as challenging, for I know the joys and discomforts of agricultural life and hold an inborn fondness for those associations which, even in hours of discouragement, I cannot deny. I believe in leadership from ourselves and respect from others. I believe in my own ability to work efficiently and think clearly with such knowledge and skill as I can secure and in the ability of progressive agriculturalists to serve our own and the public interest in producing and marketing the product of our toil. I believe in less dependence on begging and more power in barring in the life abundant and enough honest wealth to help make it so for others as well as myself and less need for charity and more of it when needed and being happy myself and playing square with those whose happiness depends upon me. I believe that American agriculture can and will hold true to the best traditions of our national life and that I can exert an influence in my home community which will stand solid for my part in that inspiring task. continue by introducing our guest speaker for the night. Beth Posdier was elected to serve as a 2019-2020 Ohio FFA State Vice President at large. She is a daughter of Millen and Kim 
Paz Deer. She grew up on a small family farm alongside her two older siblings. Beth is a graduate from Frederick Town High School. She was an active member in her chapter, serving on the officer team for three years and competing in several career development events. Her supervised agricultural experience programs include working on a llama operation, raising and showing her own flock of down south, south down sheep and working turkeys. Beth is currently a freshman at Ohio State University, Mansfield branch. She is excited to share her passion and enthusiasm for the agriculture with FFA members across the state of Ohio. Please welcome and join our special guest. Hello everyone, and thank you for having me tonight. So this past summer, I did something pretty crazy, and I received a text on July 5th, 2019. It was my best friend's 18th birthday, and like some people, they have a typical day, birthday party, not too much. However, my best friend had a list of activities. Stop number one, skydiving. Now, if you couldn't tell already, my best friend is an adrenaline junkie, and I'm not. So the thing is, I was super fearful of this day. However, I knew that if I didn't jump out of that plane, I would hear about it every single day after. So I decided to go. However, we had one more person in this situation. My best friend, myself, and my mother. Now, like most mothers, you can probably agree that the thought of your child jumping out of a plane should never cross your mind, and I wasn't gonna let it cross hers. So this is how I decided to tell my mom that I might be going skydiving. I opened the door, I put one foot out, and I said, hey mom, I might be going skydiving later, bye. And I shut the door. My best friend and I decided to take the journey about an hour and a half north of our house. We watched an intense video saying that we may die or be severely injured, signed a waiver that said if we die or were paralyzed, this was not the skydiving place's fault. And then I got these specific instructions, all right? They said, all right, now you're gonna put your hands right here on the straps, you're gonna hold it until I double tap your shoulders. Once I double tap your shoulders, you're gonna go ahead and let your arms hang out, okay? Now the next thing is you're gonna wanna bend your back just like a banana, and last but not least, make sure your neck's back because you don't want it to snap. All right, let's get you strapped in. I was not feeling comfortable in this situation. However, they strapped me in, not tight enough, I felt like, and then we started walking towards the plane. I got in and my skydiving instructor started hooking himself up to me. Now my best friend has only been out of the state of Ohio maybe two times in her life. But she did tell me one thing. Mary Beth, now these planes here, I have been on one of these before, okay? Now they are pretty shaky. They're gonna shake actually a lot, okay? But it's okay, we're gonna make it to the top and just let you know there will be a parachute on your back so you should make it down alive. I was like, rock on. <laughs> So we got in, he was strapped to me, and we started going up. 13,000 feet up in the air, my skydiving instructor told me, all right, Mary Beth, we're gonna go ahead and start making our way down to that opening there. So we scooted our way down to the plane. He said, all right, Mary Beth, now what I want you to do is I want you to dangle your feet outside of the plane, and I want you to hold that bar right up there on top of your head. I'm going to tell you all right now, I held on to that bar like any parent after their 15 and a half year old child just got their permit. I was not letting go for dear life. Then he said, all right, Mary Beth, now what's going to happen is you're going to take one hand off the bar and you're going to put it out the plane. I felt like my wrist was going to snap. He said, all right, Mary Beth, ready on the count of three, we're going to go. One, two, three. And my last thought was if I die, my mother will kill me and I jumped. I saw one of the most gorgeous views of the state of Ohio. There were farms all around me, and even though I was free falling for 60 seconds, I was clinging on to the faith that my parachute would come out. Soon enough it did, he pulled it, 
and the ride was even more peaceful on the way down. Now, the thing is, I will forever thank my best friend for pushing me way out of my comfort zone. But the thing is, we had one more thing to accomplish that day. My mother. So I walk into my house, and my mom was formally informed by Facebook that I went skydiving. Now, if y'all learn nothing else tonight, no, never allow your parents to find anything about you on social media. It's gonna go downhill real quick. Even though the next few days in the Paz Derrick household weren't the greatest, I finally sat down and asked and talked to my mom about it. Now, yes, it was extremely fightful for her daughter to jump out of a plane, although I took an opportunity away from not only my mom, but also my dad to watch me go skydiving. See, out of myself and my two older siblings, I would be the last one to do anything that crazy. Every time I rode roller coasters, they had to force me on and then I closed my eyes the whole time. It wasn't much of a ride. See, the thing is, that day, I misdefined one person and I redefined another. We often are said, never judge a book by its cover. But how many times do we still do it? However, the true question is, how many times do we define ourselves by what we think we are? We shove ourselves into a box of, yeah, I think I'm this person. I want to be athletic. That's what people think I am, so I'm going to go for it. I'm too scared or nervous to try anything new. See, oftentimes when we first get into high school, there's this crazy thing, and we decide to join FFA. And the thing is, that's not who we are, maybe. Maybe that's not the person that we defined ourselves to be, and we're so, so scared to climb out of that box. A little over a year ago, I met one of the most incredible women I've ever met in my life. Her name was Miss Linda. Now, the thing is, Miss Linda, she worked in a prison. She worked exactly with prisoners to basically teach them, once they get out of prison, how to raise their children, how to handle their anger, and how not to get back into prison. But the thing is, that wasn't enough for Miss Linda. She decided to go bigger. Miss Linda decided to take over a church that had been shut down, that her father had brought up just a few years ago. The thing is, Miss Linda took that jump. She took that risk. She had no clue if her family members would approve. She didn't have the support of her friends yet, but she knew that's what she was meant to do. She took it and she trusted that her parachute would come out. And it was hard. See, the thing is, I met Miss Linda in Florida right after Hurricane Michael. My mom and I went down there to help with wreckage and our very first stop was to completely gut a church. That church just so happened to be Miss Linda's. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, it's something to go ahead and take that jump, but it is another thing to watch it be destroyed right in front of you. However, later on that night, I sat there with Miss Linda and she said, you see, the thing is, I wanted that church redone. It needed to be gutted anyway. That building next to it that you all tore down, it needed to go. And every one of you did it for free. She didn't have to pay a dime. She didn't just jump, but she trusted that one day help would come. She took that jump and she went for it with all that she had. And even when it started going downhill a little bit, she still trusted that one day her parachute would come out. The question is, will you? Will you take the jump and maybe be an active FFA member See, right now your feet are dangling outside of that plane as green hands about to receive your degrees. But the true question is, will you trust? Will you listen to your advisors maybe the next time they ask you to do a CDE? Or maybe will you start up your SAE project? See, the thing is, a lot of the times we just fit ourselves into a box. And if Miss Linda just chose to keep going on with her everyday life, she wouldn't be where she's at today. Urbana FFA, it's time for you to take the jump and trust. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Mr. President, 
I have the applications of 17 students enrolled in agricultural education who are the candidates for the Greenhand FFA degree. Our constitution outlines minimal qualifications for this degree. We should now determine if these candidates qualify. Madam Advisor, do all candidates have the satisfactory plans for programs of supervised agricultural experience? They have. Have these, are, have these candidates met all other minimal qualifications of Article 6, Section B of the National Constitution? They have. Will the officers take their places for the ceremony? Will the candidates please rise? Candidates, you are about to receive the Green Hand FFA degree in the National Organization of Members who expect to enter a career in the industry of agriculture. Will you strive to further develop your abilities through active participation in the FFA? If so, answer, we will. Career development is a lifelong process. Your activities in this organization will help you acquire the ability to cooperate with others for the benefit of all. A good attitude and a respect for the rights of others are essential for success in life. The vast agricultural complex forms the foundation of our American economy. You have chosen well by your expression of interest in a future career in this, our nation's largest field of endeavor. By your enrollment in agricultural education, you've taken an important step towards becoming a useful citizen in our democracy. May you, like George Washington, use your talents and training for the betterment of yourself and your fellow man. The FFA is a national organization of young men and women preparing for careers in agriculture. I am proud to enter your names into the role of the Urbana Chapter Ohio Association in the national organization. Success in a career in life is largely the result of a sound education and a willingness to work. Without labor, we accomplish little unless our label, labor is directed by intelligent thinking, we accomplish nothing. The pen worn by green hands is made of bronze because of its hardness and its endurance. Bronze has been used for ages by those who sought a better substitute for crude stone instruments. May those qualities of hardness and endurance carry you far in our organization. Although you have done well and merit this recognition, let me remind you that there are heights yet to be attained. Just as there are metals more precious than bronze, there are rarer and more precious laurels to be worn in our organization. The silver pin of the chapter FFA degree and the golden charm of the state FFA degree await those who earn them. In order to attain these higher degrees, you must possess rare and golden qualities. You must be valuable but never is crushed, ductile, but never drawn into anything base or dishonorable, glowing with enthusiasm, but unaltered by the heat of conflict. It is my sincere wish that some of you would eventually be awarded the golden key of the American FFA degree. Your future is before you. Through hard work and wise decisions, you can attain the highest place in our organization, so eagerly sought by all worthy members. The FFA organization practices our agricultural leadership, citizenship, and cooperation. If you develop those abilities, you may become a leader in this organization. We need you, and this country needs strong leadership. We now welcome you as Green Hands. The advisor will now present each of you with the Green Hand. Green Hand. Joseph Allen. <clears throat> Faith Dinkle Walter. Elizabeth James. Melina Keller. Jane Krebahenny.
Sarah Baldwin. Paige Campbell. Michaela Cox. Addison Cutlip. Jonathan Hildebrand. Johnny Moore. <coughs> Connell Sherman. And Lakin Ridgewell. Let's all get in a round of applause. business which should now be transacted. Chair recognizes Liz. It's been properly moved by Liz and seconded by Sarah to pay for the FFA jacket of the person who recites the FFA creed first. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Any other new business? The chair recognizes Faith. It's been a problem moved by Faith and seconded by Ashley that our chapter donates all proceeds from Cardboard City to the Backpack Program. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Madam Secretary, do you have a record of any further business which should now be transacted? No, Mr. President. Does any other, any other member know of any new or unfinished business which should now properly come before this meeting? Hearing none, we are about to adjourn the meeting of the Urbana FFA chapter. As we mingle with others, let us be diligent in our labor, labor just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair in the game of life. Fellow members and guests, please join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now it's our meeting adjourned.